So please tell us your name and roll number for this exam. Uh, sir, I'm not able to remember the, my roll number right now. My name is Kumar Abhinav. Um, okay, fine. Sir, it is mentioned in the dash. The roll number. Uh, you have mentioned that 317650. Correct, sir. Okay. So uh, give us a brief introduction. Uh, sir, I belong to Gopinath Sasan. It's a small village in the Kendrapada district. I've completed my 10th from Gopinath Sasan High School and 12th from Kendrapada Autonomous College. Then for my, for my further uh, further education, I opted for mechanical engineering that I've completed from ITR Bhubaneswar. Uh, currently, I'm working as a content strategist in a company called Californian Geeks. Uh, in my free time, I love uh, listening discussions related to Indian foreign policy and I do jogging and running. And sir, this is my second attempt and uh, my second interview. OK, uh, tell me something about your special achievements. Uh, sir, uh, I was a part of NCC uh, in my school time and as well as my graduation time. I have uh, I have NCC A certificate, B and C certificate. I was I got the rank of junior under officer uh, in my college NCC, senior division NCC, and company sergeant major in the school level NCC. I was the best cadet of uh, 2017 for Katak Group. And sir, apart from that, I was also uh, represented Odisha in the advanced leadership camps that was happened in the Thamna, Anand district of Gujarat. And sir, apart from that, I was also uh, participating in uh, athletic events. Uh, I got first prize in the triple jump event in the at my college level. OK. So <clears throat> why have you uh, decided to join civil services? As you said, this is your second interview. So yes, uh, why civil services? Like you could have joined defense. You have a special entry for NCC cadets with C certificate. So you could have joined that. Uh, other uh, avenues are also there. You are a good sportsman athlete. So you could have joined uh, sports and uh, made us proud in uh, Olympics and other international events. Yes, sir. Give me some good reasons why you have decided to join the civil services. Sir, uh, the, the joining the defense and sports, I never think of as a career option. Uh, NCC was an extracurricular activities. I always thought in that way. So joining civil services was uh, it was the inspiration of my um, cousin, elder cousin. So that was the primary reason why I wanted to join civil services. Um, and uh, I want to contribute in the growth story of Odisha and make an impact in the people, the lives of the people. Okay, so you did your uh, graduation uh, in mechanical engineering. Yes, sir. But why have you chosen political science as your optional, uh, given the fact that mechanical engineering was also available as an optional? Correct, sir. Uh, sir, uh, the uh, sir, when I started my civil services preparation, there are two things happened. The first one is I did search for mechanical engineering tutor and the material it was very much limited as far as the state pcs is concerned in odisha and just secondly by that time i also developed an interest in the international relation as a subject so i explored the psi optional as an alternative and i fi find it it was doable for me and it was because of my uh, interest in the international relation i opted for psi sir. okay now suppose there is an extradition request for uh, yes. Sheikh Hasina Wajid by Bangladesh. Yes, sir. And you are in charge of these affairs. Yes, what sir. decision will you take and why? Uh, sir, uh, I'll make sure that uh, the the extradition doesn't happen. Uh, and I will try to resolve it at the diplomatic level. Um, the reason being, India, unfortunately, has uh, put all its egg in one bucket when it comes to supporting the um, uh, Awami League, the, that is Sheikh Hasina's party. Uh, and I feel uh, if India 
uh, we though we have ex an extradition treaty but there are exceptions in article 6 and article 8 uh, because of the political reason so india should uh, enforce that particular thing and because if we or uh, uh, extradited extradite the miss uh, mr sheikh hasina then it would hamper our credibility in the international domain because it is a it is an open secret that india had uh, sheikh hasina had the india backing or india was supporting sheikh hasina uh, sheikh hasina's regime so i think uh, we should pursue a strategic autonomy and national interest uh, on this particular issue the political instability in bangladesh yes sir what uh, opportunities and yes, threats sir. it has uh, opened up for india yes sir sir uh, starting with the opportunities uh, the first and foremost thing was it is an opportunity for india to rectify the historical mistake that india has done to only establish relationship with one of the uh, uh, other part one of the many parties in bangladesh we can rectify that because we have the leverage of being a dominant nation in terms of economy and area we can do that secondly the opportunity uh, lies uh, with uh, increasing the trade at this vulnerable period of time because as we have seen as the, in the case of sri lanka india has given uh, aid and uh, line of credit when it was in grave danger in the verge of economic instability india should also use that uh, that soft power thing uh, to go into the uh, leverage uh, to act as a leverage for india uh, apart from that sir uh, uh, the uh, apart from opportunity there are some uh, possible threats because as uh, as the chinese presence is being increasing in the bay of bengal region and uh, the chattagaon port was also um, there are some parts which are under belt and road initiative it is under that so chinese dominance in the strategic location would further increase there is a, uh, there is a uh, possibility of that and apart from that the uh, bangladesh pakistan relation that would also going to be improved so india should act as a character and stick apply the character and stick policy and uh, make sure that uh, any changes or any th thing that is going on in bangladesh should not impact india okay and what about uh, the textile sector so yes. their textile sector their economy in general is taking a beating don't you think that uh, we should take this opportunity to you know uh, boost our textile uh, sector the business which they will lose yes sir sir i feel uh, that is uh, quite an argument uh, that many of the scholars in india they have put forward but i feel uh, as per the uh, gujral uh, uh, doctrine we should work as as a uh, as a principle of non reciprocity because some uh, some sort of help we can uh, some sort of profit that we can generate i agree with that but it will also deteriorate india's image in the bangladesh that in the bad in the very bad time also india did not support and india was acting opportunist because as our atul bihari bajpay our former prime minister uh, said that we cannot change our neighbor uh, so bangladesh is going to be our neighbor for the uh, at least for some years I, i cannot say right now but so we need to make sure that the goodwill of the bangladeshi people remains intact as far as the india is concerned okay so you uh, said that you have uh, passed uh, C certificate in NCC, right? Correct, sir. <clears throat> so you are in which wing? Army. Sir, army wing, sir. And what was your uh, like uh, squadron or division? Sir, it was uh, my division was senior division army, and uh, my unit was Fourth Odisha uh, Com Tech Coy, uh, that is a technical uh, unit. It okay. Under, under... Fourth Odisha. technical company okay yes, and uh, what was the rank of your commanding officer sir it was a full colonel sir okay it was a colonel and uh, group commander of cutter sir it was commander at our time sir okay at your time it was commander okay right so uh you said 
that you have uh, attended the advanced uh, leadership uh, camp. Uh, yes, you, didn't you try for other important camps like uh, RDC or Thalsenic camp and all? Uh, sir, uh, RDC for RDC, I was the I was participating for the best cadet, uh, but sir, I had to I have to withdraw at the last moment because uh, there was uh, an appeal by my college to appear for the uh, semester examination, and uh, for that reason, I had to withdraw at the last moment, sir. Oh, okay, okay. So all. <laughs> Fire arms. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did fire the uh, arms. In your camps? Yes, sir. Yeah. What what kind of guns? Sir, it was point two two. Like SLR, sir. LMG. Hmm? Sir, SLR, LMG was uh, meant for. Hello. Ah huh, yes. SLR and LMG, you have fired? No, sir. I have fired, sir, 0 0.22 rifle, sir. Okay, 0 0.22. You have fired. Okay. In ALC also, yes, uh, they did not give you um, advanced rules? Sir, in ALC, there was no firing. Uh, it was mostly on the lead, uh, on the lead, about the leadership and the classes and the drills. Uh, that was it, sir. For navigation? Sir, yes, sir. We uh, it was uh, in our syllabus, and we have done that, sir. Now, suppose you join uh, the administrative service, and uh, you are yes. given a duty along with your colleagues for disaster management. Correct. That terrain is new; you don't know the area, and suddenly you and yes. your team you get lost. Okay, you don't have compass. That's the only yes, thing sir. you know. Some local villagers tell you that. The district headquarters, okay, is southeast, okay, of a particular temple. Yes, sir. You don't have any navigational aid. You don't have compass. You don't have any yes, other sir. navigational aid. How are you going to reach your uh, district headquarters, sir? With the uh, movement of sun, uh, if it is in the morning, then the sun is at the east. So. Um, we have to align the sun uh, from uh, the temple. We have to align the sun that is in the east. Then we have to navigate to the southeast, sir. Okay. What is the <coughs> uh, motto of NCC? So that is unity and discipline. Okay. And you remember your NCC song? <laughs> sorry, sir. I I remember a little bit, sir. Here and there, I'm not. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, fine. So uh, you are in technical company, right? Okay. So um, do you think that NCC is because you have done all A, B, and C certificate? So that is basically uh, three, uh, almost five to six years you have been there in NCC. Uh, Two sir. years in school and three years uh, in college. Right. Yes, okay. So do you think that it should be made mandatory? NCC should be made mandatory. Um, uh, for uh, uh, everyone, every graduate, and uh, that is number one. Taking it a bit further, uh, do you think that, like Israel or to some extent Russia, conscription uh, should be made mandatory in India? Uh, sir, I feel uh, NCC has a lot of benefits, uh, especially making the youngsters uh, efficient, disciplined, giving them leadership quality and providing them stamina. But at the same time, sir, I feel uh, making it mandatory is not the way forward, in my opinion. Uh, I feel everyone should have the opportunity to join NCC. And the decision has to be, make the, may, has to be made by the individual itself. Uh, for example, there are a lot of lots of colleges where the NCC is not there. They do not have the opportunity to join the NCC. Yes, they, they can join by directly recruited by the unit, but uh, other most people don't join. But I feel every school should supposed to have NCC. But uh, the the decision we should left it uh, to the individual uh, for their preferences. And sir, apart from that, as far as the military is concerned, we are very proud to have a very have a uh, world's largest volunteer army. And uh, the recent Agni scheme, uh, they it has 
uh, made provision for the civilian to join the armed forces for a temporary period and the third service commission for the officers is also another example but again sir uh, it has to be the individual choice that we should supposed to give yes if, if it comes to national emergency when it comes to the secessionist tendency or an external war we may ask the youths compel them to join the services or give the take the training but right now i do not feel uh, it is the right step uh, looking at the budget, our economy and the practicality the training facility the infrastructure are concerned okay <laughs> so um, you have uh, taken political science and international relations so as a student of political science can you tell me what was the basis on which our uh, country was divided partition the basis of the two nation theory yes sir uh, sir uh, it was the fundamental thing from for the muslim league which played an instrumental role uh, it was the hindu and muslim cannot stay in one country um, but in Okay, yes, okay. I think uh, there is some network issue. What you can do is you can disable your camera. Okay, only in audio we can continue. You can just disable the camera because uh, it will be taking more uh, bandwidth. Sir, is it now audible and visible? Yeah, it is audible now. It is better now. Yeah, th this is fine. Okay, yeah. So, uh, kindly repeat the answer once more. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I feel uh, sir, the primary uh, concern by the Muslim League, uh, which was which played an instrumental role in India's uh, uh, the partition. It was the Hindu and Muslim cannot stay in a single country. They wanted a separate um, sovereign Pakistan, sovereign country for uh, Pakistan. But India opted for a secular country, uh, and Pakistan become a Pakistan. Uh, the republic islamist republic of pakistan but sir again there are a lot of theories about the power hungriness the greed human greed which we can relate to the political science okay so in hindsight do you think that the decision taken by the indian leadership or politicians um was proper if you compare the position in which we are today <laughs> and they are today and um, or do you think that complete transfer of population like suggested by many um, great personalities at that time uh, should have been done or do you think that the decision of our uh, you know um, leadership that time that we should go for a all inclusive and uh, uh, cultural multi-ethnic multi-religious society that has paid off in the long run all right sir sir i feel uh firstly sir uh the indian leadership had a very little to choose from because after the till the time of direct action day uh call by jinnah uh indian leadership they were confident and the mount Vatten, uh, not the mount Vatten, uh, uh the cabinet mission plan also did not mention about pakistan but once the violence happened at a very large scale then there was hardly anything to choose from and i feel looking at uh, right now i think the partition uh, the first point that is coming to my 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 mind is uh, the uh, the uh, violence that has been happened during the partition should have been minimized and it was a very terrible uh, picture uh, at least if we uh, see today retrospectively uh, sir what was the last question uh, i am sorry i forgot that uh, i think that in hindsight do you feel that the decisions of our leadership that time of uh, you know having a secular uh, multi religious multi ethnic country has paid off in the longer run now if we compare ourselves to a theocratic Pakistan, or for that matter, even Bangladesh. 
I uh, sir, I uh, I uh, feel that was a, the right decision, and the the region being India, that is uh, for a, uh, since the time of um, Indus Valley civilization till today, we have been largely a tolerant country. The Parsis, when they were executed in their own country, they came to India with such a minor population. They were not exploited, and we have a leader like uh, Sam Maniksha, Jamshedji Tata. They were uh, so India. India's DNA was like that. So I think India did well to retain this. And today we can see a lot of people from uh, other religions apart from the dominant uh, religion. They are getting very high position, like Chief Justice of India, uh, the President of India, the great scientist, uh, cricket player. So I think they are. Uh, playing an integral part uh, in our uh, nation making so i think that decision was uh, absolutely correct okay uh, suppose uh, you would have uh, let us say that uh, uh, you are put in the shoes of Jawaharlal Nehru, or let's say, uh, not Jawaharlal Nehru exactly, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, what are the three okay. things during our last phase of independence, which uh, basically Gandhi ji did, uh, that you would do differently, or you would like to change, or if I may use the word, you would like to correct it. Three, any three things done by Gandhi ji. Right, sir. sir Gandhi ji uh, um, was one of the major reasons why India got independence. But sir, if I have to pick, uh, sir, then uh, in the first world war, we should not have uh, supported the British. That is one thing that is coming to my mind. Okay, fine. So uh, in your uh, um, DAF, you have given your hobby is listening discussions on foreign policy. So if you are given the powers and responsibility of solving the Israel-Palestine issue, what steps will you take? And uh, do you agree with India's point of view on this conflict? Uh, sir, I feel uh, I uh, completely agree with India's stance on Israel-Palestine uh, conflict. India, from the very beginning itself, in the support of uh, two-state uh, theory, and India is still today uh, is also opting for that uh, as well. Apart from that, that uh, non-national uh, actor like ter terrorist, the Hamas, uh, its attack on civilian population, India condemned that, which we supposed to do, um, we, we should do uh, on a moral ground. <clears throat> from uh, the early 1990s we are having a decently good relationship with israel and it is going uh, going northwards and we should continue that but at the same time we should also continue the humanitarian assistance that we are providing towards the palestine uh, apart from that when it comes to the solution um, india uh, i also feel that like the, the way india say, feel that uh, the solution has to be bilateral or uh, the two parties should be on the chair uh, on a table and uh, have a civilized discussion and get into a solution um, that would be the best case scenario so india in best case can be a facilitator between the two government um, but the point uh, the crucial point was hamas is not uh, believing the two nation two state theory in theory as well as in practice so it the plo is there um, in the west bank which agrees to that so it is a very complicated decision and uh, uh, India uh, has to make sure that all the parties concerned, they are in the table. That is the best thing that we can do. What is Israel's position uh, related to the two nation uh, or the two state theory? Uh, uh, sir, uh, the, there are two uh, regions of Israel. The first one is the uh, right wing parties the right wing party believe parties believe the both side of the jordan, jordan river there has to be jewish uh, population should stay it and let it should be a legitimate state but the revisionist right wing feel the at least one side of the 
um, Jordanian Jordan River. Uh, there has to be uh, Jewish uh, Jewish settlement. But the left party believes that uh, uh, two nation two state theory it can is possible. But at the same time, they have concern about the changing demographies. If the those population the population of Palestine who fled from their original land, if they come back, then the demography would decrease. So it is not very clear as far as the Israel is concerned, as far as I remember, sir. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, you know? Uh, suppose you are asked to uh, give some suggestions to ensure that Indian interests, commercial interest, ports, maritime interest, etc., in Israel are protected. Our investments are protected. So, yes, from that point of view, what <laughs> stand we should take in this uh, conflict? So recently we have signed the IMEC uh, uh, at the backstage of G20. So it is quite important and the Israel-Palestine issue which is currently going going on, it is will not, it, it won't affect uh, uh, in the positive direction as far as India is concerned and IMEC is concerned. Uh, so uh, so there are, uh, there is also another port which was uh, now operated by the Adani in the Israel. So uh, for that, we can ensure that the security measures would be uh, would be uh, uh, would be strengthened. And apart from that, we must also uh, uh, we must also have a talk diplomatic channel with the uh, Palestine so that our interest has been protected. Okay. Um, uh, recently, Prime Minister visited. Uh, a small uh, uh, country um, during his uh, recent official visit here. Uh, yes. Can you name which which country I'm talking about? Uh, what are the recent uh, What were the recent foreign visits of Prime Minister? Uh, sir, he has visited uh, the Ukraine, uh, and uh, right now I'm not very yes. sure, sir. You, uh, during that Ukraine visit, uh, some other places also he has visited. One uh, small yes. Asian nation. So Poland was another country uh, that he had visited, but I'm not able to sh uh, un remember the. A member of ASEAN, A S E A N. Uh, sir, I'm not sure, sir. I'll read more on it, sir. Okay, just uh, go through that. Yes, sir. Have you heard about Brunei? Yes, sir. Brunei. Yes, sir. So, why did you visit Brunei? Uh, what is the strat uh, strategic significance of Brunei to India? Uh, sir, Brunei uh, is a is an Indo-Pacific uh, island country, and uh, I uh, that is one of the major regions, and it has like every other ASEAN country, it has a uh, Chinese dominance when it comes to its trade, and the um, uh, the six dash or the uh, the South China Sea region also Brunei is an extended part of it. So these are the significance for Brunei uh, for India. It is also uh, an active member of activist pol uh, activist policy as far as India is concerned. Okay, so what is your opinion regarding? Uh one nation one election and who was if you remember who was the chairman of the committee which has just uh, given the final report yes sir um uh, sir uh, the one nation one election uh, 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 is a flagship of us, uh, is the most anticipated program by the current government in its uh, previous tenure and uh, it was um, uh it was uh, our former president uh, who chaired that particular meeting but which president i'm a bit confused on that i'll read more on it sir in ramnath my ramnath kobin no ramnath right, kobin right, right sir ramnath kobin sir honorable ramnath kobin sir was the president of it and sir uh, my personal opinion is uh, 
even if we are doing the central election and few here and there state election at one go we had to go for the six uh, different uh, uh, dates and uh, the the duration is more than one and a half months so it is very much difficult at that particular moment as far as the logistic and uh, implementation is concerned and apart from that uh, the one nation one election is also uh, it, it it is uh, we have to change something on at the constitution level to make sure that one nation one election happen because at the earliest hour from 1950 to 1967 we were for all practical purposes one nation one election has happening but once the state government they fall apart uh, before completing their tenure and there was no majority uh, clear cut majority at the central level so the stability when the stability was at the stake then the duration of the election was uh, different so without changing the constitution uh, it is uh, practically impossible uh, that one nation one election but yes in the future we may uh, some we may do something so that it may materialize sir. so uh, you you do not have any issues uh, conceptually but only in the implementation part you are saying that that might be a problem so conceptually also there are few limitations sir like for example the uh, there was a report i was uh, studying and as per that the state uh, would uh, the federalism would be affected by the one nation one election because when the uh, center and state elections will come uh, will happen simultaneously then like uh, if i could name in 2014 there was allegedly a modi wave that swept the central election the national level election but in states when the elections uh, which were placed at the different time they were um, won by the regional party like aam aadmi party won in uh, delhi uh, uh, new delhi so but if that happens at the same time then the national wave may swept away the regional uh, parties so that's what uh, i feel okay so uh, what is your uh, opinion regarding uh, legalization of same sex marriages in india and give uh, at least three reasons for your uh, support or opposition okay. uh, sir uh, say decriminalization of uh, section 377 of s12 um, ipc uh, i completely agree on that but the marriage Uh, same-sex marriage is currently under the judicial custody. The case it is going on, so uh, it is a bit difficult for me to comment on that. There are positives, there are negatives, and uh, I feel the individual liberty should not be hampered. But at the same time, uh, as the um, as the opposition, as the uh, other party says, the it is against the value system of the country. So I feel whatever the whatever should come it should come from the bottom of the pyramid rather than imposing up from the top when the society would uh, be agree agreeing then uh, we should opt for that but again sir then comes the constitutional morality versus consciousness and personal morality come into the picture the individual liberty come into the picture uh, so it is a very complex issue in my opinion sir okay so uh, you have mentioned triple jump also you got first prize so yes, can you say in world athletics who is the most famous athlete known for a triple jump and uh, from sir, which country does he belong yes sir so one him i could think of is uh, jonathan edward who holds the world record in 1995 world athletic championship uh, uh, he was from england okay uh why do you think that athletics in india it's picking up now but still then we are way behind china okay like china for example let's say even in swimming nowadays they are defeating us which for yeah. a long period of time it was considered that uh, they are uh, or australia or new zealand hmm. yes, so um chinese in built and uh, physique also To a large extent, they are uh, similar 
okay, protomongoloids, even if you see the race, uh, yeah. they are not very tall as such. But still then they are getting a lot of uh, medals even in uh, events like swimming and all. Okay. So yeah. why, why we have been left behind? What are the reasons? And uh, how can we remedy them? Uh, sir, I feel uh, the there are a few things that is being working for China as far as athletics is concerned. The first and foremost thing is uh, scouting the talent at the early stage of their career. And second thing is, sir, uh, uh, once, the, once the infrastructure, once they are scouted and they are providing enough infrastructure, like diet, uh, coaching, uh, coach, the discipline, it, it is being inculcated at the very early in their career and they are spending a lot of money for it. Uh, so practice makes them man perfect. Um, so in that regard, they are having very good diet from the very early um, of their career and they are uh, getting into that job, uh, the athletics at the early stage of their career. So they can, at the time of the prime of an athlete, uh, the Chinese athletes, they are ready to go. So for that, there has been there has been an improvement uh, in the Chinese athletic teams uh, are concerned. Okay. So uh, suppose you are uh, um, appointed um, as an administrative officer, and okay. you are uh, you are having NCC background and. So there is a uh, situation in your office where yes, your subordinate staff has been divided into groups. Yes, sir. Based on some ideology or let's say some geographical uh, you know, identification of those things. And yes, it is becoming a big problem to run the entire office okay, in a proper manner. Um, working towards the same goal. So yes, in this case, what are you going to do so that your entire staff works in one direction and there is coordination among them? Right, sir. Uh, sir, if that is something uh, I ever encounter, then uh, what I can think of is to gather everybody at one uh, place. And uh, I would encourage an open talk what are the problems and what can we do uh, as a potential solution? Because this problem has uh, it has to go uh, for the betterment of the organization. Because at the end of the day, we are all government uh, servant and we, are, we have to do the national duty or state duty. So I have to gather and make sure that there is no problem. Whatever problem is there, whatever humanly solution that we can take, uh, uh, we, we have to take. If it is a region-based West Odisha, East Odisha, North Odisha, South Odisha, I have to ins uh, ensure that they uh, they see it as a whole of Odisha rather than a part of it. Somebody who is from a village or somebody who is from a city, uh, they have different background. But at the end of the day, they are uh, they would always be called you are from an underdeveloped state if you are not working. Uh, uh, India can be termed as a developing country from an US perspective. So we have to see the larger picture at the uh, at the uh, larger extent. We supposed to grow together. So that uh, intent I would bring on. And apart from that, I would also make sure that uh, they to arrange some uh, weekly uh, sports and uh, like some small competition among them, some song uh, singing competition. So these things, uh, 30, 35 minutes after the working hour, we can do once in a month or twice in a month. So that would also bring uh, uh, liveliness among them, sir. Okay, uh, so in your uh, CIF, you have written that your first uh, job you were working as um, uh, um, your uh, copywriter for uh, search engine optimization. Yes, sir. So uh, suppose I'm a layman, I don't know what is search engine optimization. Uh, can yes, you explain sir. it to me in simple terms? Yes, sir. Sir, search engine optimization uh, is a digital marketing tool. Uh, it is a new phenomena as far as 
the developing country like india is concerned in that we help our clients to rank higher in the google so that whenever somebody searches a particular keyword our website comes at the first page so that more people will enter click to that website and enter to that website and once the engagement increases uh, the sales number would increase and our client would greatly be benefited okay uh, have you heard about larry page and sergey brin uh, i'm sorry sir i'm not able to uh, remember right now who, who are the founders of google uh, i'm not sure sir okay do you think that artificial intelligence is beneficial for mankind or do you think that uh, you know it is a destructive tool ultimately it is going to take away our jobs and you know people will be you know uh, yes. facing problems due to it also it is making us lazy uh, sir there are uh, both both side have their own argument like uh, the global internet has been divided between elon musk team and mark zuckerberg team so there is one group which feels that it is a very good thing we can uh, a, a, enhance our efficiency by artificial intelligence by providing them the, providing it it a human interface it would help uh, help us making complex calculation at ease uh, uh, it would also decrease the human intervention so the human physical error would reduce but at the same time as you have mentioned about the possible job loss it is also uh, a definite uh, concern especially for a developing country like india no uh, but sir again sir when the internet came into the picture similar speculation were made and uh, uh, but i feel it would also create more jobs it will definitely take away some jobs which are which are less uh, relevant or which are very manual without using the brain this kind of job it will take but at the same time it would create a lot of jobs so that uh, it would provide uh, great employment so the job loss that we are currently witnessing it's a temporary period in my opinion so i am very optimistic about artificial intelligence okay uh, what is what do you mean by this doctrine of colorable legislation if you can give me one example uh, pardon me sir uh, can you please repeat doctrine of colorable legislation with an example have you heard this doctrine constitutional doctrine doctrine of colorable legislation i'm sorry sir i'm not able to exactly remember the this particular okay, concept okay it's fine um tell us something about the evolution of this uh, current collegium system of appointment of uh, judges uh, initially the government was appointing then the three judges case if you yes. if you know the history if you can in yes, short sir. okay you can tell us Yes, sir. So the first judge case came into the picture in eighteen nineteen eighties, early nineteen eighties, nineteen eighty one or eighty uh, two. It said that the executive prerogative should be respected, but the major the collegium system established in the second judge case, uh, where the where it is said that the a collegium of two members, two senior most judges, uh, would be there, and their uh, recommendation uh, is the uh, it is. Uh, the president has a very nominal role in it or the executive has a nominal role in it and the third judge cases also reinforce that but at the same time enhances the uh, increases the number of judges to from 2 to 4 uh, plus chief justice of india uh, the njac case uh, happened which is also called the fourth judge case that was happened uh, around 2015 which which said that the 99th constitutional amendment or it was it is in unconstitutional because uh, the judicial uh, independence is a basic structure of our constitution and by uh, uh, including the executive and the subject matter expert house outsiders legal experts uh, it is diluting that particular uh, basic structure so the collegium system was reinforced again okay so my last question to you would be Uh, recently during this uh, ganesh uh, utsav um there was a video and photos of the prime minister attending the uh, ganesh utsav um 
in the residence of the chief justice of india yes sir. so many critics and people from opposition they have taken offense to this okay mainly uh, the your head of the supreme court bar okay kapil yes. sibal so what is your opinion was it proper for the prime minister to go um to a private event it was not a public event the private event and then get the photos clicked and the videos you know that went uh, they, they went viral in the social media so both for the chief justice of india as well as the prime minister of india so what is your point of view do you think that there is any issue in this or you think that no it is fine yes sir uh, sir i feel uh, uh there is though there is a separation of power but that is in the public office between the legislative executive uh, and the judiciary especially the judiciary and other two organs in in the case of india but what i believe is that the prime minister visited the cgi's personal residence in its personal in his personal capacity he must have been invited or it, it was from his initiative do it was been criticized i see it from a bit of a different lens because in the over the past few months or some one or two years it has been seen that there has been a growing conflict between the executive and judiciary and uh, by attending his personal function uh, personal uh, attending as a personal guest prime minister provided a very subtle uh, very subtle uh, uh, message to the entire population that uh, the judiciary and the executive they are working in harmony and for the betterment of the country i see in that particular direction but yes kapil sibal sir uh, what about uh, it, its comment on cri the criticism is also justified on its own grounds sir okay fine so that will be the end of the interview now coming to the feedback so uh, first uh, positives re aparangara um most of the issues you handled very in a balanced and nuanced way okay what is exaggeration ki emotion seta roilan to balanced way re apan koile that is good um opinion based questions re improvement ame kon kar pariba ki jodi ame ta ko enumerate kar ki answer kariba first reason second reason third reason in that way and first sentence re hi apanankara opinion ta de debe so suppose mu jodi pacharli apan ko one nation one election upar apan opinion kon to so, sir i uh, support uh, conceptually support ki jab bhi i have my reservations uh, with respect to this concept my first reason is this second reason is this and tapar apan seta koi paribe ha to seita ta ko enumerate kar dile auri adhik apan ko marks asi okay tapare guessing bluffing kari bini pray apan kari na ti if you don't know something clearly tell them that you don't know don't indulge in guessing or bluffing au tapare hela jitta pale bhi apan okay gote gor question pachara ta di tinta part ach you know some part sabu jan na ti kichi part jan chanti tale jo part ta bhalo jan chanti seta kahibe baki uda kahidebe mate asuni ki mor mone pod ni ja unable to recall or uh, i do not know or jab pe pro hoy kar rahe the theek hai rest things are all fine um the factual side bhi prepare hai ki jibbe ko din achhi apan kar interview sir uh, uh, guru bhar sir first day din aur teen din pore yes sir yes sir okay tahale that is uh, um, kon date apan kar achhi se ta 19th sir 19th uh, तो 18-19-20 इंटर इम्पोर्टेंस इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ कौन थी बस इड़ा इतने दिन रे नेशनल डे ऑफ कौन थी वो उड़ीसा पे कहाँ इम्पोर्टेंट से इड़ा ठीक है देखिए देखिए जुपे से इड़ा उड़े जनरल क्वेश्चन पचा रहे करंट अफेयर्स अपनों को रा पूरा पूरा मने लाइक जो दिनों जाओ चंदी से दिन ठीक हो चिता कहेंगे ना लेट से आज ही रात्रि कौन होटल है ला कि वेडनेस डे दिन कौन होटल मेजर दिन सहेला ओके सो सही गुड़ा भी क्या पढ़ो देखिए वाला 
फर एक्जामपल प्राइम मिनिस्टर को विजिट अछि काली ओके से कोन पय अछि कोन ताको प्रोग्राम्स अछि ठीक है सेटा देखि देथि पे फॉलो करत ओके ओके यस सर आउ इफ वी सी द मार्क्स देन आई विल बी गिविंग यू अराउंड 160 आउट ऑफ 250 फॉर दिस इंटरव्यू जो कि एवरेज मार्क्स अछि अपन चेष्टा करबे ताको 180 ऊपर को ना भई ओके बट इट हैज टू बी 160 प्लस 160 ऊपर रखले त तपर जते अधिक ऊपर पर रखबे सेते भलो ओके बट यू आर वेल प्रिपेयर्ड तनु किछि प्रॉब्लम नहीं तपर अपन को एक्सप्रेशन आ ये सब पूरा बैलेंस्ड अछि ओके तो इट इज क्वाइट अपन माने एमसीसी रो येटा भी जणा पुछि तनु आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट ओके यू विल डू गुड इन इंटरव्यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू नमस्कार सर सर Mm, Uh, okay sir whatever you think sir but it is real sir that that is uh, for sure okay that is fine i think we can stop the interview here then uh, you can